I want to welcome you to our regular meeting of the Berkshire County Board of Commissioners for Tuesday, December the 16th, 2014. At this time, I, I would like to recognize, recognize a couple of special guests. Uh, Bill Featherwhite from Rutherford College Town Council, we welcome you here. You can be fine. Uh, from the Board of Elections Director, we welcome you here too. Gentlemen, do either of y'all have a special guest here this evening? Family members? Oh, yeah, I've got an excellent mother in law, Debbie Taylor. She is the teacher of the children, I believe, is going to be your pleasure to lead. All right, anyone else? All right, if not again, I welcome you here at this time. I, if you would, silence all your mobile devices for me, please, so that they won't go off during the meeting. If you're called to the front and use the microphones, if you would, lean forward and use those microphones real close. Madam Clerk, all the commissioners here, along with the county attorney and the county manager, deputy county manager. Our invitation tonight is going to be done by Pastor Mike Chandler from Summit Community Church. And right after uh, Pastor comes up and does our invocation, we will have the Pledge of Allegiance from the Ray Fielder Student Government Association, where Karen Alton is the principal. So our order will be the invocation first. Mike, if you'll come to the podium, and right after the, the, that, the children will do our Pledge of Allegiance. Pastor? Thank you. Uh, let us pray. I think, Father, we're very grateful to you for your blessings to each and every one of us. And, Father, the fact that we're here tonight, that we're alive, is a blessing. And Father, I pray that for this evening, I pray for all the decisions that will be made, all the things that will be going over. Father, may we have your mind and your heart. And, Father, I pray that your will be done tonight in all things. May you be honored and glorified through what is spoken and what is thought in everything we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Great. If y'all will remain like that, we want to come down and take a picture with you, and then you'll see your picture over here on the wall one day if you want to come in and see it. What point do we get there? Y'all come on up, get your cameras ready. Well, the big crowd left. It lost one whole side. 
All right, gentlemen, move on to item number four is approval of the meeting minutes. In front of you, you have the November 4, 2014 free agenda meeting minutes, the November 18, 2014 regular meeting minutes, and the December the 1st, 2014 Board of Commissioners organizational uh, meeting, uh, which was provided to you last week. I think you've all had time to take a look at those. If you're uh, satisfied with those, if there are no changes, we'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, if there's no uh, changes or deletions, I make a motion to approve the three uh, groups of minutes as printed. All right, you've heard the motion from Wayne. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand, except Jeff, you can you raise your left hand. <laughs> Jeff said he tried to pick up his wife with one hand and it did not work. And he was bummed up and in a swing right now. I don't believe that story, but that's what he said. We move on to item number five, the approval of that was five of Madam Clerk. Move on to the approval of the agenda the agenda. You have a supplemental information provided for decision item number two. Um, will you entertain a motion for the agenda? Certainly, Mr. Chairman. All right, you've heard the motion from Maynard. All in favor signify by raising your right hand. The five oh Madam Clerk, a presentation tonight, a first presentation, will be recognition of Libby Cooper, uh, Retro Deeds, and uh, we're going to recognize Libby and her family. Gentlemen, I, I want to request something special, if it's okay with you. I want all of you to join me down front, if you don't mind.
We begin on item number seven of our scheduled public hearings from BDI Economic Development Grant Agreement for CE Foam Solutions LLC, and that will be presented by Brian Steen. Right? Let me just uh, put that up here. All right, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, as uh, you're aware, CE Foam Solutions LLC is located in a 65,000 square foot building in Valdez and intends to hire 20 full-time associates over the next three years. The end product is the foam material used in the upholstery business of residential and commercial furnishings. Now, the company has received a $20,000 1NC grant from the state of North Carolina, which requires a dollar-for-dollar -dollar match. Uh, the town of Valdez approved all documents related to the economic development grant with CE Foam Solutions, LLC, and approved the $10,000 of the 1NC match at their November 3rd, 2014 meeting. Uh, so we will need to do likewise and um, hold a, a public hearing and then come to the conclusion of that hearing <coughs> make a motion regarding this request. Thank you, Brian. Madam Clerk, I'm now going to open the public hearing. Is there anyone here that would like to speak to the CE Foam Solutions LLC grant, uh, grant uh, agreement? Anyone? Seeing no one, Madam Clerk, I'll close the public hearing. Gentlemen, anybody have any questions for Brian on this matter? Hearing none, what is the pleasure of the board on this matter? Mr. Chairman, the motion is a little lengthy, but it's to approve an economic development and sound grant for CE Foam Solutions, LLC, including the adoption of resolution to approve the grant agreement and authorize the chairman to execute on behalf of the board Subject to review and or revision by the county attorney to appropriate $10,000 of general fund balance in FY1450 if needed. Further authorize the chairman to execute any further documentation related, related to this grant if needed. All right, you've heard the motion by Wayne. All in favor signify by raising your right hands. My clerk, that will be five to nothing. Thank you so very much. Madam Clerk, has anyone signed up for public comments? Yes, sir. We have one gentleman, Mr. Jeff Johns. Mr. Johns, come forward, please. Miss uh, Johns, would you? I want you to go to that microphone right there. If you would say speaking. I appreciate you giving me the chance to uh, speak on my behalf uh, in regards to the matter of the proposed limbal access uh, road going in to access the boat launch and county park. This is somewhere in the future. Uh, as I learned from Scott Carpenter over the past year, present resources is needed 140 acres to you immediately adjacent to my property with uh, what is the old historic books for a road uh, leading into it. This road, I, I bought my property 30 years ago when, when present resources was clear cutting the timber up in that area. They had already taken all the wood off the property, which is now due for Burke County's land. But they had not timbered the land behind me, which is still present. So I know what it's like to be unsettling and the, and the disruption this kind of traffic can cause when it's this close to a home. Of course, I bought that land uh, with the intention of being out in the, in the country where it's, where it's quiet. Um, the difference between what is about to happen was being proposed to happen and the crescent timbering operation is that I knew it, at some point it would stop. Uh, if, if this proposal goes through, I'm going to be looking at constant uh, disruption from traffic, noise, uh, dust. And I'm asking your consideration to consider relocating this. I have spoken with Scott and Joe Character, the fellow with Duke, Duke Energy, about this. And obviously, yeah, they want to they want to bring it in the cheapest way they can. I understand that, but um, for a little extra money, I think we could reroute this around me. Uh, I, I 
kind of brought some little pencil sketches with me from, from the Google uh, uh, or the top graph the map. And, you know, the total road is going to be about 4,000 feet. To reroute it, it might take a quarter of that, maybe a thousand feet at the most. My other question, of course, is the timeliness of this. Um, Duke Power is committed to building this road, according to Joe, and but but they're not going to build the boat launch for eight to ten more years. I mean, I'm a boat owner. I go down and use the Lingle Access as it is now, and on the Fourth of July, which is the busiest day of the year. I still find space that's gone there to park right in the middle of the day this year, last year. So, my question is, according to Scott Carpenter, there's no funding for the county park yet, and I'm wondering why we need to rush into building this road, particularly where he wants to put it, um, if, if, there's, if, if it's going to lead to nothing for a while. I mean, so... As I said, I'm, uh, I ask your consideration to try to um, find a solution to reroute it around me or to mitigate, you know, the damage it will cause me. I mean, I can't help but to believe it will reduce the value of my property. I, I have a rental property on the premises um, that I rent to people who share the same um, like the solitude that I do, and I think you could affect my my business, and um, honestly, my quiet enjoy it in my property. So I uh, I appreciate your consideration of this, and uh, if, if if you could come out and see, I'd love to show you how close this is. I mean, the trail is basically, my property line goes down the middle of the old Wilkesboro Road. It, it's, it's 30 feet from my bedroom window. Now, Joe told me it's gonna, they're going to try to bring it up to DOT standards, so they're going to need 30 feet on each side. You know, let's say it's another 30 feet. Still, it's, it's going to be quite close. I can hear the church bells and you know, from the church a mile and a half down, I can hear people talking down at the, the current Lindell Access area on a calm night in summertime. So I can only imagine what traffic, I mean, I don't know how long it will take to construct the road, year, two years. Mr. Johns, let me interrupt just a moment. Jim, without objection, I'm going to give him a minute or two to finish up. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, I went over my time. Okay. Anyway, I just it's, it's to okay. Just I would love to have any of y'all out if you would consider coming to let me show you, um, you know, how this will impact me. So, thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Right, moving on item number nine is our consent agenda. At this time, I recognize county manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, you have uh, 16 items on your consent agenda. A DOC adoption of rules of procedure for 2015. DRCA Community Service Block Grant for Fiscal Year 2015-16 from the Clerk Resolution Establishing DOC 2015 Meeting Schedule, Clerk Board of Commissioners 2015 Commissioners Appointment, Number 5 Clerk Board of Health Appointment and Reappointment, Number 6 Clerk Removal and Appointment to the Board of Adjustment, Number 7 Clerk Appointment of Member to the Burke County Planning Board, Number eight, clerk appointments to Tourism Development Authority. Number nine, clerk, 2014 annual report for the Nursing Home Community Advisory Committee. Item 10, finance, agreed upon procedures, engagement. Number 11, HR, amendment to section 5.04, expectation of ethical conduct. Number 12, register of deeds, approval of records retention schedule amendment. Number 13, Tax EMS Collections Report for October 2014. Number 14, Tax Tax Collections Report for November 2014. Number 15, Tax Release Refund Report for November 2014. And number 16, Western Piedmont Council of Government Release Request for Release of Deed of Trust for Bradley Ledford. 
That concludes your items on the consent agenda. Thank you, Brian. Gentlemen, you've heard the 15 items on the consent agenda. What's your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to motion to approve all 16. I've just heard the motion by Mayor. All in favor, signify by raising your right hands. I don't think that will be five for nothing. Or five to zero. But now, I'd like to see an item for discussion. Our first item is from the county manager on the uh, section of construction manager at risk. Right? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, we sent out a request for qualifications related to obtaining a construction manager at risk for the construction of a new jail. We had five companies provide submittals. Uh, the companies were Turner Construction, WM Jordan Company, Hanoi Construction, MB Con Construction, and Hickory Construction Company. Uh, board members received copies of all submittals on October 21st, 2014. Uh, at that time, uh, I asked that the chairman and commissioner Britt assist myself and the finance officer in reviewing these and scoring them. And later on, uh, the commissioner um, Taylor um, also wanted to participate. Uh, County Finance Officer took the results of our scoring, and the results are the Noy Construction Company was the first best ranked out of the five. Um, so I don't know if you want to have any further discussion about that, but again, the Noy Construction was the top company when the Finance Officer took all the scores from all the, the raters and put them into a calculation to decide which company was the best qualified according to our, our schedule and our evaluations. All right. Do you want to have any questions for Brian? Just now. Well, if there's no questions, what is the uh, pleasure of the board on this matter? Can I move to authorize can manage to negotiate next to contact track with the recommended firm for construction management risk services for per NCGS 14364.31 in relation to the construction of a new council chair? All right, you've heard the motion by Jeff. I'll try to signify by raising your right hands. All opposed? It's four to one, Madam Clerk. We're going to our next decision items in general services will be the renewal of lease for NC18 South Convenience Time, presented by Brock Hall, our interim director. Brock. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As uh, we've discussed in our previous meetings, uh, the uh, contained site on 18 South uh, lease agreement will, will run out on December 31st of this year. The uh, property owner has uh, extended to us a couple of options in order to continue to occupy the site. The first option was uh, the renewal of the lease agreement uh, for uh, an increase in the, in the rent of $125 a month, uh, increasing the annual rent from $4,500 a year to $6,000 a year. Uh, the other option that she presented to us was the option to purchase the property for the amount of $32,000. Uh, and that was the last information that I received uh, since the pre agenda. All right, you've heard all the information from Brock. Anybody have any questions for Brock or the county manager on this item? Go ahead, Mr. Chairman. I thought we were going to entertain a purchase of the property. Did we decide not to do that? No, sir, you have the option tonight to make for a lease agreement and or for a direct purchase. It would be either one of those two options. You changed the lease agreement from six years down to three. It's always been three to my knowledge. Uh, three. And we negotiated down to two, I think. Uh, oh, that's right, because the six is the amount of money that we were going to pay six thousand a year. Right. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I, I think the only option here, again, I think uh, they did some negotiating, but again, I would. Uh, Think that it would be a benefit for the county to uh, buy not only this spot but other spots where we have, and, uh, and this is ridiculous uh, going to 1500 on this site uh, in five and a half years. They'll have to pay for if uh, against the price of rent, and it should probably go up again sometimes. So, uh, 
I don't think there's any other thing but a recommendation to, uh, I'll be happy to put that in the motion to uh, authorize the staff to uh, go ahead and do that with the, uh, and I still like to see some negotiation there. I'm, I'm sure you, you know, to maybe wave the money in their face a little bit or whatever, but, uh, you know, 32000 isn't bad, but again, 30000 would be better. Any other comments? Jack, is there? Okay. Do you have any other comments? Sure. I put it in the form of an email, but I would like to just say it to the public. I think this is my form. I think it's going to be the same thing. Absolutely. How many years have we leased from her, Bob? Oh, gosh. I'm not sure. It's been a while. Has it been 10? I believe it's been at least. At 10, and how much would have been the average for those each year for those 10 years? Oh, you remember anything like that? Yeah. So if it was purchased a long time ago, we'd already had to pay for it. Yep, more than one. Okay, I'll entertain the motion. Okay, the motion is to authorize staff to uh, any state direct purchase of real property for $32,000, uh, appropriate general fund, fund balance, and authorize county manager to execute the related documentation. All the five are signified by raising the right hands. Madam Clerk, that will be five to zero. Thank you, Brock. Thank you. And uh, I think Wayne also uh, signified, Brian, that he'd like for us to pursue and I'll if we could purchase the rest of those. Yeah, I've already asked what the public can do. Right. Well, that concludes our items for decision and moves us to number 11, our reports and comments. So let's start over on the right hand side. Uh, no comments tonight except to make everyone Merry Christmas. Same thing, but I have a few things I'd like to show you. Certainly. Uh, this past Friday night, I was honored with the opportunity to be the speaker for the Western Piedmont Community College Basic Law Enforcement Training Class of 2014-02. Uh, that's, that's EMS. Can you back up to the, uh, the other picture? Back the other way. Steve, do you have that picture of the uh, flag? Never mind. Let, let me just go on then. Thank you, work for it, All right. Uh, got some updated pictures of the EMS station number seven. Can we do that a little slower? They're doing some inside wall work now. That's in the bay area. The bay doors are in. A little bit slower. That's the front of the building. Bay. Uh, some electrical work. Systems. The asphalting has been done. This is a picture of the back of the building. Now you see that the asphalt has actually been done also to the senior services parking area as well, and the new parking spaces are off to the right. And so I didn't get that into the frame on that particular frame. Uh, you can see I'm worried that I'm going to have to have the law down there to keep the EMS folks. They, they already had three ambulances there waiting, waiting to get in. They're excited. But you can see where those ambulances are. That, those are new parking spaces that the senior services will be able to utilize. And again, this is all one paving operation, so there's not going to be any old asphalt versus new and any kind of issues with the seams. And the guttering, the concrete guttering and curbing has been put in. Um, any more? There's the flap. All right. And then uh, a couple Saturdays ago, I got to go down to uh, Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. That was the first time I've been back on an active Air Force Base in about 32 years. Uh, that's the KC-135 air refueling plane. They uh, were built starting in the mid-1950s up to 1964. And I was on one of the newer ones that was built in 1961. Uh, I think they've got a picture of their, their squadron mascot. If you can see that with the flame coming out of the gas nozzle. There's some, some other different pictures inside the cockpit before we took off. 
Uh, they were airborne. There was a couple of tankers off to our right side as we were flying out to the, the practice area. And I think we've got some live video. The noise, sound of that? No sound? All right, well, we tried to get a little bit of an actual video of it while I was in the airplane. And I believe that concludes it again. Thank you. Um, we support our guard and reserves and um, wish everyone Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Again, I, I wish all our citizens a uh, very happy uh, and prosperous uh, Christmas season and a uh, new year. And I, I hope uh, our economy looks like things are turning a little bit. And I hope again that we, our uh, folks can uh, there'll be jobs for them this year and uh, just uh, a very prosperous new year, I hope. Thank you. For you folks who can't see, Santa Claus has been here a couple of times already. And on the left, here is one of the gentlemen. Thank you, sir. And it's three people in the rear. This past year has been a great year. We have, sorry, on top of this much. Say to you and to yours, we hope you have a happy, safe, and healthy holiday. And you get to see all your friends. And I hope Sunday will be really good to you. Thank you, Mom. Yep. Thank you, Commissioner Feather. I'd like the others to just simply echo a uh, Merry Christmas to everyone and a happy new year. Time to save time. I'll stay for what the man is saying, so I won't take up more time. Wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a great new year. We'll be better off next year than we are now. Keep moving forward. I just wanted to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Enjoy the year. Thank you, gentlemen uh, and citizens of Burke County. The only thing I'd like to, to say is that we are truly blessed. God has blessed us richly. We live in one of the greatest places. We live in the greatest nation on earth. And I would uh, say that living in Burke County, uh, for us, we all been here most of our lives, and this is a great place to live, work, and play. I, I, I'm truly blessed, and my family's blessed. I'm, I'm blessed to, to work with you gentlemen on this board. I, uh, this, in my opinion, has been one of the better boards that has uh, stayed together for a long, long time, and I do appreciate that. We certainly all don't agree on everything that comes in front of us, but we, we do the work with uh, the public, and uh, I do appreciate that very much. Uh, to you citizens out there, I hope God rich, richly blesses you during this season, and I hope we always remember what this season is about. Thank okay. you for the announcements. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. We have the following um, vacancies on county boards and committees. The Hickory Regional Planning Commission, Don't Care Community Home Advisory Committee, the Nursing Home Community Advisory Committee, the Council on Aging, the City of Morganton for the ETJ, um, for the Chestnut, the Board of Equalization and Review, Juvenile Crime Prevention Council, Library Board of Trustees, Burke County Parks and Recreation, and the Voluntary Agricultural Board. We're also soliciting applications for the state vacancies, North Carolina Museum of Art, Cemetery Commission, Environmental Management Commission, and the North Carolina Finance Agriculture Authority. Thank you, Kay. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll again uh, remind all you folks that are watching us on TV, 
please take advantage of these boards that are open. We do need volunteers. Just get in contact with Kay or go to our website and see what's available. We do have a need to go into closed session to discuss threat and offending litigation and to preserve the attorney client privilege, to discuss economic development matters, and to discuss personal matters that are authorized by North Carolina General Inspection 143-318.11, paragraph 83, 4, and 6. So I need a motion. A motion by Wayne. All in favor? Let's talk about a five minute break before we go into the session. The very well second day pro session concerning a matter under litigation that will be sealed until all parties have agreed to the terms and conditions of this litigation, and we will stand in recess until January the 6th. Uh, 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 uh,